When you look at the news media, everything is bad news. But here I am to tell you about the good news. You see, the whole world is talking about inflation. But the Lord said to me, we're not in this economy. We're in God's economy. Praise God. Amen. And so he gave me this message this morning. How to receive supernatural blessings from God. You see, supernatural means beyond the course of nature. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'll never forget, I'll tell you the story before you can sit down. But Linda and myself were in South Africa, and we were working very hard. And when we looked at the money, it was 18 to 1, 18,000 South African rand is $1,000. And so I said to Linda, we can't spend any money. We must save this because when we get home, you know, we need money to pay an our debt and things like that. But I never knew that God will always ask you to give when you don't have. So a lady called me, a very good friend of mine, and said that her father passed away. And she said, Pastor Newby, the only problem is we don't have money to pay for the funeral. So I put my foot in it. I said, how much do you need? She said, we need 18,000 rand. The Lord said, you've got to give it. Now, I don't argue with God. You see, when you debate with God, you're going to change your mind. So he sent it to her, and they did the funeral. And so we were invited to do a, a meeting at a camp. There were just 15 people there, you know, uh, teaching on intercession and prayer. It was leadership of a church called the Lighthouse, very big church, but only 15 people came to the camp. And so we ministered on prayer and things like this. And this lady that never even looked like a fluent person, we never knew she was a professor at the university. She came up to me and said to me, Pastor Newbury, the Lord said I must give you my bonus, you know, that the university has given me. I said, the university? You know, you never judge a book by its cover. You know? So she called me on the Monday and she said to me, it's going to take a bit of time because the bank has got to clear this. I thought it was about 500 rand or something like that. You know, when the bank cleared that money, it was 10 times what we gave. Wow. So the Lord said to me this morning, He's going to release supernatural blessings upon you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As long as you are obedient to the word. Praise God. So let's bow our heads in word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. You are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. Nothing is impossible with you, Lord. With you, all things are possible. You're the God of the impossible. And so as we go through this dispensation, with what we see in this world, we know that you will provide. When the devil starts messing, that's when our God starts blessing. So, Lord, we put our faith and trust in you. Have your own way in the service. Give us wisdom knowledge of how to go about to receive from you, Lord. Yes. We know that you were a giver. Yes. You gave your only son. Yes. He gave his life. Yes. How much more should we not be giving, Lord? And so bless each individual here in a very special way as we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, a pastor came to me and said to me, I found it very amazing that he said to me that his people are not tithing. And I was over the phone. And he said, Pastor Newbury, do you know the reason why the people are not tithing? And the word just came out of my mouth. 
I said, because you are not tithing. So he said, you see, I take people to lunch and I do this and that. I said, no, that's not what you do. You don't take that off the tithe. I said, you just like business people that I prophesied over and told them they were going to be millionaires. And when they made 10,000, they gave a tenth, which was a thousand. When they made 100,000, they never gave a tenth. All of a sudden, they say they're paying them a salary of 1,200 and they pay 120. I said, because they're robbing God. Tithes and offerings is when you give to God and he only asks for a tenth. I said, you know, I prayed over business people that were going bankrupt. And when I told them they're going to become millionaires, they stopped tithing. They say they're paying them a salary. I said, you must have a cash book like you have for your business. So this man came to me in South Africa. He had buses, and because he was colored in South Africa, he never got any contracts with the government. He had about 50 buses. And he came to me and he said, Pastor Newby, I don't know what to do. My buses are, 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 you know, they're all idle. I said to him, you know what you must do? Give one of those 50 buses out of 10. Give one to the church. I said, when the church comes to get your luxury buses to take the mothers out and things like that, take one out of the 10. And he started doing that. You know, he got one of the biggest contracts in South Africa, and today he's a millionaire. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I said to that pastor, God requires us to give a tenth. In the book of Malachi 3 verse 8, the Bible says, When you give, God opens up the windows of heaven. Praise God. Hallelujah. So when you bring a teaspoonful, the windows of heaven open, and you can only pour out a teaspoonful. If you bring a wheelbarrow load full, that's all that he pours out. When you bring a truckload full, that's all that God pours out. Now, I sit with a lot of people that are scholars, and then they talk about Malachi being the Old Testament. I said, listen, they said tithing was in the Old Testament. I said, no, in the New Testament, everything belongs to God. And I said, in the New Testament, he doesn't open windows, he opens doors. You can get more through a door than through a window. Turn to your neighbor and say, God opened all the doors. You see, when God opens a door, no man can shut it. And when God closes a door, no man can open it. So the windows of heaven open when you give. God cannot bless you if your hands are closed. It's only when you are a giver. Praise God. Hallelujah. That God can bless you with the supernatural blessing like we received. Praise God. You know, in South Africa, they repossess 25 of my father's houses because they declared the area white. And they gave him nothing for 25 houses as imminent domain. And what happened is, now that we have, a, uh, you know, the ANC taking over, I went to try and claim for, for the land. So they said to me, we can only give you one plot. I mean, out of 25 houses that were worth millions, I used to watch the Cape to Rio race from my front porch, uh, right by the sea. And they took that land. So they gave me one piece of land, and I went to preach at this guy's church. And he said to his congregation, I really would like to move back to that area, you know, but I just can't afford it. He had a small church. And the Lord said, give him the land. So what happened is, hey, I debated that. I said, this is the only piece of land I got. The Lord said, give him the land. So I gave him the land, gave him the title to the land and things like that. But I opened myself to a supernatural blessing. So what happened is, I, I got onto the plane. And the Lord said to me, tell my people... And even tell yourself that you sing it, but you don't practice it. I said, what's that? He said, you sing that we went to the enemy's camp 
and we took back what he stole from us. I said, well, I claim that land back. Not tenfold, not a hundredfold, but a thousandfold. And the Lord spoke to me again. He said, I'm going to give you land. I said, where do you want it? I said, in America, because that's where I'm living now. You know, I got home. I was just home for two weeks. When, when I came here years ago, I used to do prayer meetings in a restaurant called Nick's Restaurant. There was a lady that was a newspaper reporter from New York for the New York Times. And she, uh, you know, had cancer. And I prayed for her over the phone. I didn't know that God healed this woman. So, you know, I mean, 20 odd years later, she calls me and tells me, God told me to give you land. Do you remember me? I said, yeah, but, you know. I said, where's the land? She said, in, in near Greenville, uh, South Carolina. She gave us 150 acres of land. <laughs> you see, you've got to claim back what the devil has stolen from you. I'm even claiming money that I spent in the pub when I was unsaved. <laughs> I don't know about you. <laughs> I'm just getting it back. Supernatural blessings. Linda and myself, during this pandemic, we were not able to minister, but the checks are coming in the mail. Somebody gave me a Mercedes Benz. Then he gave me a Volvo. I had to give the Volvo away because I've got too many cars. When you give to God, he's got a way of giving back to you. Praise God. Supernatural blessings from God. So the windows of heaven open. And he says he pours you out a blessing. Number two. Number one, the windows of heaven open. There are eight spiritual blessings when you give. Number two, he will pour you out a blessing. Number three, there will not be enough room for you to contain it. And number four, you will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. The devourer is the devil. And you want to know why the devil is attacking you, your family, or anything like that, is because you're not giving. You know, my son, when he was seven years old, I mean, from the time he was born, he had asthma. And very bad that whenever he had an asthma attack, we had to take him to hospital. They used to put him in an oxygen tent. And one day, a man was preaching in our church, and he said, you know, that because you're not tithing, the devil is attacking your children and your family. And he said, I want you to sow a seed for your children's healing. And he named the seed. And I had just that amount of money in my pocket. It was my old salary. I'll never forget. I said, God, I need this money more than you. But I closed my eyes. I threw it into the offering. <laughs> and you know what happened? The devil was attacked. Now, right next door to me was a guy that was a Muslim, you know. So the Lord said he was going to heal my son. And that night, I mean, about a week later, my son got this attack. And God told me he was going to heal him. And I was a young believer at that time. And my son turned blue. And the neighbor came in, and when he saw my son, he called the police. And the police came. And they said, we're not allowed to touch your son, but if your son dies, we're going to take you for culpable homicide. And I was praying. I said, Lord, I mean, the devil sent that man in. And so they came. But you know, at 2 o'clock in the morning, my, fun, my son's whole countenance changed. And it's 40 years ago. He's never had one asthma attack. Our God is able. He's able to heal. He's able to deliver. He's able to set free. He's able to supply all your, your needs according to his riches in glory. God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that you have all sufficiency in all things. And so much so you have to give away to others. God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. I don't know why people don't want to give. 
You know when God told us to give that Volvo away, a station wagon? We were so happy riding to Newport News to give it to the pastor. Praise God, there's something that you feel when you're giving to others. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'll never forget we were in, you see, God can provide for you anywhere. We were in Mogadishu in, uh, you know, in Africa. And the place was in famine. There, were no, there was no food. Somalia. And they are Muslim country. 98% of them are Muslim. And this Muslim man got saved. And he said, I said, what do you want from God? He said, please, Pastor Newbury, pray for me that I can have food. Amen. So I said, Lord, you heard this man's request? Just a simple prayer. I pray that you will have food. Amen. Simple prayer, and he left. The next day, he's a Muslim, so he, he made a confession that he was receiving Christ as his Savior. When you receive Christ as your Savior, he becomes your provider. Amen. Two days later, he came running, smile on his face, waving at me from a distance. I said, what happened? He said, I got a job. I said, with who? With the relief organization. He's going to hand out food. He'll never stop. God has got a way of blessing you. He can set up a table in the wilderness. Amen. Hallelujah. And so then the Bible says here, there will not be enough room to contain it. And he will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. That's the devil. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. The fruits of your ground are your children. When you give to God, he will not allow them to be attacked. People want to know why their children are wayward or why their children are not serving the Lord. It's because they haven't paid their tithes. God cannot work on your behalf. Amen. Amen. So the, the Bible says, you will, they will not be able, you will not be able to destroy the fruits of your ground. And number six, neither shall the vine cast its fruit before the time. You know, when the vine cast its fruit before the time, the crop gets destroyed. Amen. I know we in South Africa, we live right where they grow grapes. You know? And if there's anything that happens, those grapes are not sellable. It will be destroyed. If it's too much heat or too much frost, praise God. Hallelujah. So what happens is, the vine will not cast its fruit before the time means that in due time when you have a need, this is how I pray. I said, God, when I had, I gave. Now I have a need, you give. You can speak to God like you speak to your father. Praise God. I speak to God all the time, even on my way here. I start complaining and things like that. Even in the morning when I get up, I say, Holy Spirit, I really feel bad this morning. Getting, you know, things that, you know, at home and my body is paining, you know. And then he says, okay, I'll heal you. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have to speak to God like you speak to a friend. You know, Jesus said, I'll send another comforter. It'll be your comforter, your guide, and your teacher. But none of us speak to the Holy Spirit. I speak to him all the time. Hallelujah. Ask him what I must preach. And he'll even change your message. While you you know, in your own mind decide this is what you're going to say. No. Praise God. I had to scramble there to get this message together now because I had some other message. <laughs> Neither shall the vine cast its fruit before the time. And all nations shall call you blessed. Do I look blessed? Let me tell you something. Blessing of the blessing will follow you all the days of your life. As long as you are a cheerful giver. Amen. And the Bible says, and you, number eight, you shall be a delightsome land. God loves a cheerful giver. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now the supernatural blessings is amazing. You know, in Luke chapter five, you find out that Peter, James, Andrew, and John, they were fishermen. That was their business. 
And there's not a day that they never decided where they were going to fish, how they were going to market their fish, and everything. And Jesus tells them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. They never knew what it meant. Fishers of men. But you know, after that miracle there, they decided to follow Jesus. Because they found out he could be their provider. Peter, James, Andrew, and John had their worst day of fishing. They were at the Sea of Gennesaret, the Lake of Gennesaret, and they were busy washing their nets. They had fished the whole night, never caught a thing. And here Jesus came, and he was ministering to the public. But they could not hear him. So, you know, Jesus used natural acoustics because he never had a microphone with speakers and things like that. That's why the Sermon on the Mount, he went and ministered in a mountainous country. You know, when you shout in a mountain, out echoes, hello, hello, hello. And so we in South Africa, we, I come from where the two oceans meet, the Atlantic and the Indian Ocean. We do a lot of fishing. And if you're on, on a boat and you shout to the shore, people can hear you because the sea amplifies the sound. So Jesus needed his boat because the crowd could not hear him. And he asked Peter for his boat and he launched out and he started preaching to the crowd. Now there's something about Jesus when you bless him. He's going to bless you. Hallelujah. But not only with enough, but abundantly more than enough. He's got a way of blessing you that you have so much, you cannot contain it yourself. Praise God. Hallelujah. So what happened is, he said, Peter, have you any meat? He said, no, we've toiled the whole night. And so Jesus said, Peter, take nets and put it on the other side of the boat. Peter never listened to the full instruction of Jesus. That's why Peter had little faith. You know, I don't want little faith. I said, God, what is the best you've got? He said, the best is perfect faith. You know who had perfect faith? Abraham. But God said to Abraham, he must offer up his only son. He never dilly-dallied. The next morning, he saddled an ass, took his son. They traveled for three days with two young men. Eventually, when they got to the certain place, he said, you young men, wait here while me and my son go yonder to worship the Lord. I said, God, how could Abraham say he was going to worship you? The Lord said to me, you don't understand. The highest form of worship is obedience to my word. He was going to offer up his son, and he says they're going to worship the Lord. The word of God is by what we stand by. Praise God. And so when they got to the place, he, he tied his son. He had the wood for the burnt offering on his back. You know, his son says to him, behold the wood on, for the burnt offering on my back, the fire and the knife in your hand, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Yes. So Abraham by faith says to his son, God himself will provide the lamb for the sacrifice. Yeah. But what I like about Abraham, he said, you young men wait here while we go yonder and we'll be back again. Yeah. He didn't know that his son would be coming back with him. Praise God. But he was obedient to the word of God. And he was just about to slay his son when he put the wood uh, for the burnt offering on the, the altar when the Lord stayed his hand and said, Abraham, I have seen your faithfulness. And there was a ram with the horns caught in the thicket. Notice it wasn't a lamb, it was a ram. A ram represents kingship. And with the horns caught in the thorn bush represents the crown of thorns. I believe when Abraham and Isaac, when, when Abraham put his son on that altar, God must have shown him the crucifixion. Because if the Son of Man was obedient to offer up his only son, God the Father had made up his mind that he was going to send his son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. <laughs> Praise God. That's why the Bible says, before the foundation of the earth, the Lamb was slain. How could the lamb be slain before the foundation of the earth? Because God is all-knowing. He's the Alpha and Omega. He saw Adam and Eve sin. 
and he had a second Adam to come to lay down his life so that we can have life in life in abundance. Say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It wasn't those nails that held him on the cross. It was love that held him there. He could have called 10,000 angels. But he laid down his life for you and for me so that we could have life and life in abundance. We've got something to get excited about. Jesus. Amen. And now the Lord said to me, so many people say they love Jesus, but they don't tell a soul. You know, when you fell in love with your husband and wife, you told everybody about him. Now you say you love Jesus and you zip your mouth. <laughs> you know, I was preaching in South Africa in a tent. And what happened is, it's a very bad area. Gangsters all over the show. So before the people even came to the meeting, the gangsters were taking up an offering. <laughs> they were robbing the people outside. And I had a wooden pulpit, and I preached on hell is no joke. And the leader of the gang was standing at the entrance of the tent, and he heard what I said. And he came forward with a machete in his hand, straight towards me. Boy, I was shaking in my boots. And these pastors are sitting there, 15 of them, they're not moving. And this man walked up. And they threw the machete into the poop and it went like that. And I said, what do you want? He said, I want to get saved. I said, Phew. <laughs> The rest of the gangsters shout, what are you doing? This man had tattoos all over his face, his chest. But he got radically saved. And then he said to me, Pastor Newbury, I want to be your bodyguard wherever you go and preach. I said, no, I'm not going to walk around with a man like this with tattoos all over. I said, I have to create something for this man. So I said, you know, in South Africa, people commute and they don't have cars and things like that. So they take a train like because they go a distance to travel every morning to work. I said, you must become a train evangelist. Get on the train and preach. He said, that's a good idea. I said, yes, it is. Anything to keep him away from me. But he was radically saved. You know what he said to me? He said, he was so demon possessed. He said, Pastor Newbury, on a Friday night, something used to come up in me. We cast our demons out of this man. It took about... Uh, the whole night for us to get rid of all those demons. He said, if I never stabbed a human being, I would have to stab a horse or a dog. So you can imagine how many people he killed. And he, he died young because they found out he was the guy after he confessed everything that was killing all the people and that in South Africa they had the death sentence. Before they could put him to death, he died of a heart attack, so God just took him home. <laughs> Praise God. But what happened is, he got on this... Uh, this train was a long distance train. And then there was a woman sitting at the window and he was going to witness to this woman. So he slid over to the woman and the woman slid over to that side. And then he slid over to this side. The woman went to that side. But he didn't know how to start because he was a young believer. And so he shouted at the woman, if you should leave earth right now, where are you going to spend eternity? The woman pulled the emergency. They stopped the train. They arrested him. And three o'clock in the morning, he was calling me. He said, Pastor Newbury, I'm in jail. They gave me one phone call. So I had to get all his documentation saying that he was an evangelist and travel for two hours to where he was and tell the police that he's an evangelist and, that, and they released him. Praise God. Hallelujah. But what I'm saying is, we lost our first love. Telling people about Jesus. Hallelujah. If you love Jesus, you have to be witnesses. I mean, heaven is no place for lazy believers. 
When we stand before him on that day, at the moment he's an advocate, on that day he'll be your judge. Will he say, well done, my good and faithful servants? Praise God. Or will he say, I don't know you? He said, but I cast out demons, I did this, all these things. But the Lord will say, you're standing here alone. You never witnessed. Hallelujah. Any opportunity I get, I witness to people. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you should do it too. Praise God. Hallelujah. So he said to Peter, have you any meat? He said, no, master, we've told the whole night. So the Lord said, you take nets. Peter said, I will lower the net. He had little faith. You know what the Lord said to me? He was going to give people the, Peter the ocean, but he settled for a river. God always wants to give you abundantly more than enough. You know what happened when he lowered the net? The net break. Because Jesus said nets. And then he had to call his buddies to come in and help him. His boat started sinking. Their boat started sinking. I tell you, when God starts giving to you, you'll have to give away to others. There's so much that you will have. Praise God. Hallelujah. So Peter settled for a river when God was going to give him the ocean. God always wants to give you abundantly more than enough. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that you may have all sufficiency on all, in all things. And so much so, you'll have to give away to others. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Give away to others. God loves a cheerful giver. And so if you're obedient to the word of God, you pay your tithe, give your offering, and then there's a, a way to receive a supernatural blessing from God is when you bless a man of God. The man of God in your church is for your miracle. It's the power of perception. That's why Mary and Martha, whenever Jesus came around, they fed Jesus. So you know where you see Jesus again? When Mary and Martha had no faith. So the man of God in the church stands in the gap with faith for your miracle. They had no faith. They said if you had only been here, our brother would not have died. It's the only time that Jesus prays like that because before that he just lays hands on the sick, speaks the word. But in that instance, he had to stand in the gap with faith. And so he says, Father, you have heard my prayer. And then he says, Lazarus, come forth. And the power of God came upon Lazarus, and Lazarus stood erect. The man of God in your church is for your miracle. You know, I was preaching in London on a Wednesday evening service. And this man is an apostle. He had three churches in London, but he lived in a council flat with five children in a two-bedroom house. He had an old beat-up Ford, uh, you know, vehicle. But in his church were lawyers and doctors. He's from Ghana, but Nigerians and Ghanaians were in his church. And on that Wednesday when he showed me his house, I got very disturbed. And I went and I spoke on them blessing the man of God. Just like the Shunammite woman did. The first thing she gave him a meal. And, and she said, I perceive that this man that comes around here is a holy man of God. You have a holy man and woman of God in this church. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So she first gave them a meal. And then she built on the room. Now it cost me mega bucks to do an e extension. But the way she furnished that room is very interesting. The Lord showed me. A bed. A bed for a man of God speaks about rest, but it also speaks about wrestling. When somebody in his church is going through a divorce, somebody's in hospital, somebody's dying of cancer, he doesn't sleep, he's interceding and praying for that person. Praise God. Hallelujah. So that's the bed. Speaks of rest and wrestling. And then a table. A table speaks about preparation. We we prepare our messages. You see, you cannot have a message from the outer court. That's carnal messages. 
The inner court is mind and intellect. We have to be seated with Christ in heavenly places, get into his presence, and let him give you the message. Because if you speak out of the throne room of God, miracles are going to happen. You don't get any miracles if you're preaching a carnal message. Today they're preaching all over this country, and some of them are so dead that the people in the audience are dead, but they're too lazy to fall over. And they look like, uh, like father, but they dress like mother. <laughs> now, I didn't know I have to throw that in. But you know, when I was five years old, my mother said she took me to a Catholic church, and the father came with the incense. Yes. And I shouted, Madam, your handbag's on fire. You were too serious when I looked at you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So where were we? <laughs> Before we were so interrupted. <laughs> What's this? Yeah. So. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so what happened is. I spoke to them about these blessings, yes. that they need to bless the man of God. I took an offering of 20,000 pounds on a Wednesday evening in that church. They bought him a Mercedes. Today he's living in a mansion. But he's never invited me back. <laughs> I just have to carry on because I'm an evangelist. You've got to move on, praise God. When the churches get bigger and you preach there when they were small, right, you don't get back there. There's a church in South Africa that was a tiny church. Today they got 10,000 people. I started the prayer group there, T taught them how to pray for souls, and now no more invitations. Praise God. Amen. But that doesn't matter because the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, we need to know that you have to bless the man of God so that you open yourself up to supernatural blessing from God. There will not be enough for you, for you to contain what God wants to give you. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, they broke into my house in South Africa. And I, I had a bonus of a thousand, and they stole it. And what happened is, I got another bonus about six months later, and I decided not to take it with me into the house, so I left it in the ashtray of my car. You know, I was working for Mercedes at that time. I was just a member of the church. Lo and behold, if somebody does, the devil knows exactly where the money is. The guy broke the back window of that Mercedes and took the ashtray. So when I got a bonus a few months later, I thought I'll take it with me to church. Keep it on me all the time. And I was an introvert. I sat right in the back row, you know, where Jim is sitting now. And he's not an introvert, but he's right in the corner where I used to sit. <laughs> And this pastor got up, he's supposed to minister the table of the Lord. He was building a church in a little country area. And he said, the Lord says to me that I need to get a thousand here from somebody in this church. I thought, what? He said, I'm going to send this offering bucket. I said, you're supposed to minister the table of the Lord. What are you asking for a thousand dollars? I mean, a thousand for. And then he started passing this bucket around. I never interceded the way I, was. I did. <laughs> Lord, please fill that bucket before it gets to me. But I must have taken this thousand in and out of my inside pocket about a thousand times. But when I did, I threw it into the offering. I said, Lord, I need this money more than you. Threw it in. You know what happened? The next week, the boss calls me. He said, uh, I got a bonus for you. I said, no, we got bonus last week. 
So now they, the headquarters said it's due to you. So I asked everybody there, did you get a bonus last week? Yes. This week? No. The next week I get a bonus again, a thousand. I go asking everybody. Then I went to him. He said, I'll call headquarters. The third week I got a bonus. He said, don't come in here with a bonus story. Just keep the money. For five weeks I got bonus. You know, I was preaching in a guy's church in Chesapeake about the supernatural blessings. And a woman left the church to go out to the ATM to draw a $20 bill because she wanted to receive this blessing. She came in after she went to the ATM, threw it into the, you know, the offering. But what happened was, when she put the card in to draw from the ATM, the ATM spat out $500. So she put the 20 in and she took the 480 to the bank the next morning. She went to the bank manager and she said to him, look, this is what happened. The bank manager said, that's impossible, but we'll check the machine. When they checked the machine, they could find nothing wrong. No $480 extra dollars there. Everything was kosher. You see, God can even fall these banks and these ATMs because he is a miracle working God. Hallelujah. So you should be ready for your supernatural blessings. Hallelujah. There was not enough room for Peter to contain what God was going to give to him. God loves a cheerful giver. And that's why I say to people, don't give when you're not giving cheerfully. Right? Not grudgingly, but just give cheerfully and bless the man of God so that you can be blessed. So you know, we cannot bless you with natural things. So you know what happened? Elisha said to his servant, this woman has blessed us now with this room and everything. What can we do for her? said, well, she's old and she, don't, she doesn't have any children. And then the man of God calls her and he prophesies over her that within a year she's going to give birth to a son. You see, we can bless you with spiritual things. You know how many people I prayed for that were going through a divorce and God heals their marriage. People were going bankrupt and God made them millionaires. Praise God. I'll never forget the pastor came to me and he said to me, Pastor Newbury, I'm not going to be on Sunday. And I had been ministering all around to get my airfare to get back home. And I just have enough money to buy my, my ticket to get back home after I had ministered. And he comes on a Friday and he gave me this love offering. So Sunday morning I came to church and a guy was standing at the door greeting me. And as I shook his hand, the Lord said to him, give all that money you got in your pocket. I said, no, tomorrow I must go buy my ticket. <laughs> so I left the man there. I go to the restroom to pray. I don't know where you go. <laughs> I went into the restroom. I said, Lord, you cannot be speaking to me right now in this situation. Tomorrow I must go buy that ticket. It's ordered everything. He said, you get back there and give that man the money. I turned around, I went, I gave it to him. Amen. He called me into the restroom. He said, Pastor Newbury, I've got something to tell you. I said, what is it? He said, you see, I was a businessman, but my business went bankrupt. My family and myself, we haven't eaten for a week. We got no money. And I'm too proud to tell the people what I'm going through. I said, you need to get rid of pride, you know? I said, that's the only way God can bless you. But anyway, I finished preaching. When I got into the car, the devil said to me, so how are you going to get home tomorrow? All of a sudden, I hear this tire squealing. The guy backs up. He comes riding into the parking lot of the church. He said, Pastor Newbury, I'm a businessman. I almost forget God to give you this. He gave me a check for 10 times what I gave away.
You can never outgive God. And God is able to meet your needs in a very special way. You know, today that businessman has recovered. He's got a massive business in South Africa. But he went through a, a period of time where his business went bankrupt. God can turn around your circumstances. And that's what he's saying to me this morning. He wants to release the supernatural blessings upon you. You don't need money. What you need is faith. Start believing God far more than you believe circumstances. Linda and myself, we were stranded in London. A guy invited us to do a week of revival and never picked us up at the airport. And I was in America for such a short time, I never had a credit card from the United States. We, had no, we just had a few dollars on us, not even pounds. We had no place to stay and we were supposed to be in London for two months. We've got a bag full of tapes that we were going to sell there, you know, of our ministry and things. And here we stranded in the airport. Man, I've never been in such a difficult situation. I knew every square in that airport because I was walking up and down, interceding and praying. Nothing happened. And while I was speaking in tongues, a lady sitting in the airport waiting for somebody there from Ghana, she said, are you people believers? I said, yes, we are. She said, uh, are you an intercessor? I said, yes, I am. She said, so am I. So I said, we're supposed to be preaching at this man's church, but he never turned up to pick us up. The lady said, you know, I used to belong to his church. You're not the first person that is left stranded here in London. You have to go home with me. Man, she gave us accommodation for the two months that we were there. She called all over, got us on television, on radio. We sold all our tapes. Hallelujah. It's a terrible thing to be caught in another country when you don't know anybody. But one thing, if you know God, He will make a way where there seems to be no way. Hallelujah. So I have opened myself to supernatural blessings. Because if God says to me to give, I'm going to give. Praise God. And you should do likewise. If he says give, you give. And you'll see how he will open up those windows of heaven. Even open the doors. And give you so much, you'll have to give it away. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. And God is able... To make all grace abound towards you. So that you may have all sufficiency. In all. Say all. All, all things. All. And so much so. You'll have to give away to others. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. In 1984. I came to America. Nobody's ever done this before. I only had enough money to buy a single ticket. And I came to America with a single ticket. Right? Nobody's done that before. They must have, well, customs, but I thought, must have thought I had a return or God was working on my behalf. But when I got into the airport, there was a guy that looked just like George Foreman that was the immigration officer. And he said to me, uh, after buying my ticket, I just had $100. I had this Delta ticket. It was Sea America. It cost $199 for a month. And I came for two months. I thought everybody would open up the doors here for me to preach. When I called them on the phone, they said, we don't know you, brother. I said, no, I'm an evangelist from Africa. <laughs> they said, you can be from where you want to be. <laughs> we don't know you. <laughs> so I was stranded in America. And what happened is, but before I even got in, this man stopped me. He never asked anybody else that question. He said, how long are you coming to America for? I said, for two months. 
He said, how much money have you got on you? I said, a hundred dollars. He said, stand right there. You won't even survive for one day with a hundred dollars in your pocket. You know what the hotels cost here in America? And then what happened is, he let everybody else through. I started praying in tongues. God, you cannot send me back now. I saved this money for six months just to get here. And look at what's happening now. He said, what African language are you speaking there? I never said a word. He said, okay, what are you going to say to me that's going to convince me to let you through? I said, well, I've got family in America. I've got brothers and sisters. I'm speaking about my spiritual family. He said, what else are you going to tell me? I said, well, my father is a multi-billionaire. And he said, whenever I need anything, I can call upon him. He said, well, if that's the case, you can go through. God will make a way. So now I was stranded in America with this hundred dollars, but I could fly anywhere. I'd just be on standby. So I jumped in a plane in New York, flew to Los Angeles, slept on the plane, had breakfast and supper. Praise God. (laughs) Then I got on the plane in Los Angeles and I flew to Cincinnati just to have breakfast on the plane. (laughs) Hallelujah. I was living off the, on the plane. <laughs> I never spent anything over a hundred dollars. God gave me wisdom. But for one month I prayed and I got my first service in Monroe, Louisiana. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you know, a millionaire got out of a wheelchair and he picked me up on a Monday, bought me two suits. And when I went to South Africa, I was speaking at the conference. There was a guy from Mauritius, and the Lord told me to give him the two suits. Thousand dollar suits at that time. I said, no, I can give him two other suits, but not that. (laughs) But I gave those suits to him. And when he was preaching, this pastor from America, you know, said to me, wow, I thought these people in Mauritius were poor, but that guy is wearing a thousand dollar suit. And... and, uh, you know, I, I thought to myself, I better not tell him. That's my suit he's wearing there. <laughs> but you feel good when you give. Praise God. Hallelujah. So while your heads are bowed, you want to receive the supernatural blessing from God. This is only God is able to do this. He's able to meet you at the point of your need. Some may be going through financial stress. Some may be going through something. And it's to do with finances. And God is saying this morning, I am Jehovah Jireh. I'm your provider. Your boss is not your provider. I am. I am the great I am. I'm the son of the living God. And what's impossible with man is possible with me. I'm your healer. I'm your deliverer. I'm king of kings. And I'm lord of lords. I'm the all sufficient one. I am the great I am. I'm the son of the living God. And I am able to meet you at the point of your need. If you have any need and you want a miracle this morning, Jesus is passing by this highway. All you've got to do is reach out and touch Him. I cannot perform a miracle for you, but He can. He's here this morning. And He said He's here to meet you at the point of your need. He wants to meet you at the point of your need. So just raise your hands and say, I need that miracle. I need that miracle, Lord. You need that miracle today, just raise your hands. If it's healing, whatever it is, he's here. Make your way to the front.